Answer me this. Do you ever struggle to get your song to sound as loud as commercial recordings? Or do you find yourself fighting for clarity between instruments at the bottom end of the mix? I'm Justin with From Zero to Studio, and today we're going to be talking about an important and often underutilized part of the mixing process, high pass filters. So what exactly is a high pass filter and how should you be using it on your tracks? Let's discuss. <laughs> A high pass filter is essentially a type of EQ adjustment that removes or filters out the lower frequencies of a sound. It lets the higher frequencies pass through, allowing you to hear everything above the frequency that you have it set to. Every instrument and vocal has a certain area of the frequency spectrum that they live in, and by removing the unnecessary frequencies from these tracks, you can clean up the bottom end of the mix, make room for other elements like kick drum and bass guitar, and develop a cleaner and more focused sound. Using high pass filters will also help to free up headroom in your mix. If you've ever struggled to get your song to sound as loud as commercial recordings, you probably notice that it starts to distort or sound squashed from the compression and limiting, and it still doesn't sound as loud as your references. That's because this low end buildup, even if it's inaudible, is causing your compressors and limiters to work harder on something that you can't even hear. It might not be too noticeable with just a couple of tracks like an acoustic guitar and vocal, but once you have a bunch of tracks and a full mix pumping this additional low end, it can really start to affect your mix. So these are all the raw tracks with no processing, and let's check out the guitar solo. So on a guitar in standard tuning, the lowest note is 82.4 Hz. This solo, however, the lowest note played is a C, and that's got a frequency of 130.8 Hz. So I'm going to open up an EQ, and I want you to watch the analyzer on this EQ. So we've got frequency information all the way down to about 45 hertz on this solo, which is pretty insane. So I'm going to throw a low pass filter on here and drag it back just to hear what's going on in that range. So it's really just a bunch of that clankiness, all the low rumble and, and some of the deeper pick attack and stuff from the amp. A lot of that is unneeded on a solo like this where everything's playing higher up in the register. So let's get rid of that low pass filter and we're going to dive into what we're talking about today high pass filters. So I'm going to throw a high pass filter on here. And you can see what it does is it starts to curve down and gently roll off those frequencies. And you can adjust the angle of the slope, um, but I'm going to keep this at the default setting, which is 0 0.93. So I'm going to play this solo again, and I'm just going to slightly, slowly move that high pass filter up the frequency range and see where it feels like a good spot to cut off at. So you can hear when you go too far, it really starts to change. Yeah, so somewhere between that 110, 120, even up to the 130 range, uh, 130 hertz range, which is where that first note, that C starts at, um, I totally feel comfortable doing that. It's just kind of slightly reducing the lower end and just making more room for the other instruments in the mix. So I'm going to A-B compare that. Let's listen to these first two measures where that, that slide comes in. We're going to put a loop on that. And you'll be able to hear as I turn it on and turn it off how much of that, of that low-end rumble is really getting out of there. So we didn't lose any of the information from the notes being played. We just kind of got rid of that low rumble, all the, the noise going on underneath the solo that's going on. Even bringing that up to that 130 hertz, which is where that first note starts at in the solo, it, it still sounded fine on that note, and I would be comfortable doing that. Let's jump over and take a look at the kick drum. So you'll see that this kick drum is pretty prominent right around that 50 hertz range. But we've got frequency information all the way down to 16 hertz and below that. That's just the lowest that this frequency analyzer shows on this plugin. And humans can only hear down to 20 hertz, and this is pumping out info below that. So let's get rid of some of that. So 
So I set the high pass filter to 20 hertz, and what you'll see is it's kind of just tapering off just a little bit of that excess low end. I don't want to lose too much of the thump of the kick out of here. So take a look when I A-B compare and just watch right in this region right here where my mouse cursor is at. And you'll be able to see how it's just slightly tapering off. So again, it's subtle, it's these small moves, and when you do all these subtle small moves across your entire mix, it's really gonna make a huge impact on the overall sound. And even just setting the high pass filter to 20 hertz, it reduced some of those lower frequencies below that point, six to 12 decibels, and that's huge when it comes to how hard your compressors are working to compress these sounds. Typically when mixing, a high pass filter is gonna be the first thing I add to every track, just to get rid of some of that unneeded frequency information. So you can go through each of your tracks one by one and use an analyzer to see where in the frequency spectrum each of your tracks are at. And then my best advice is just to adjust it to where you start to hear the sound of that instrument change a bit and then dial it back. And you don't have to use an analyzer for this, but it can visually help you understand and learn where each instrument sits in the mix. So as you can see, high pass filters are definitely an essential tool in the mixing process. They can help to reduce clutter, improve clarity, and free up headroom in your mix. Now, as you're working on improving your recording and mixing skills, if you want a guy that'll walk you through every step of the process from songwriting and recording up through mixing and mastering, you can download the roadmap to a radio ready song. This guide covers the five steps required to take your song from sounding like a demo to sounding pro, and you can download it absolutely free as my gift to you by going to from zero to studio.com slash roadmap, or by clicking the link below in the description, and you can start improving how you're creating and capturing your music. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'll see you on another video soon.